Wait, are you a married man? Yes, sir. Your wife lets you keep this junk since the sixth grade? Oh, that's why. <laughs> you can't blame the woman. You want a branding iron. If it were a famous ranch, right? It might be. Well, where'd you find it? Elkhart. Elkhart, Indiana? Where, like, Miles Pharmaceuticals is? <laughs> it's not Miles Pharmaceuticals. What's it called? Bayer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I don't know, a lot, not a lot of ranches near the pharmaceutical companies, right? <laughs> Branding iron like this, about 25 bucks. Um, unless we can get, of course, a... Um, unless we can get a famous ranch connected to it. Which we can't. One? No. Foo dragons, not dogs. The dogs are usually like this, on their hind legs kind of thing. This particular food dragon is made in Asia anytime between 1900 and about 1920, value on it about 15 bucks. Cast brass. Look it is. No idea? Here, let me help you. Did you see that? That's history at work, right there. I make one move with my hand and you all know it's Napoleon because we've been joking around that Napoleon would put his hand in there right near the gallbladder, right around here. How's your gallbladder feel? Good? Mine goes up and down. How's your gallbladder? <laughs> oh, see, everybody lost theirs. <laughs> then yours must feel good. <laughs> anyway, Napoleon and Josephine. What's wrong with Napoleon and Josephine from this art historian? Those of you who are watching my YouTube channel know what I'm going to say. They're married. She should be on the left. He should be on the right. They should be looking at one another. They're not brother and sister, but they are in an element that makes them look as if they're brother and sister. Ugh. All right. Now, what you have here is Napoleon Bonaparte, of course, Emperor of France in the early 1800s, and good old Josephine. Notice Josephine's hat. She's looking kind of contemporary. <laughs> she isn't really looking like the kind of costume that she would normally wear in that time period, is she? So you got them, they're handed down, they're reverse glass paintings. That means that the, they're actually painted from the reverse on glass. This piece of board is what actually will maintain the glass onto the, and maintain the paint onto that piece of glass. How old are they? They date between 1850 and 1880. They're valued at $2,500 a piece. You surprised? You are. Okay, they're very nice. How much did you pay for them? Oh, they're family heirlooms. Now, she's cracked all the way through, so we can't give her a value of 2,500 bucks. She's worth, the, with the crack, which is significant damage. You got a crack, you know, it's kind of like this kind of damage. It's significant damage, right? Value on this particular piece is gonna be just around 500 bucks. See it plummet for condition? Condition is extremely important. He's beautiful and more important, really. You know, yeah, yeah, she's the empress and she's Josephine, but important so it's better that he, she's cracked rather than he's cracked very nice uh, mid to late 19th century French um, images very nice I like those um, Martin guitars like this this one would be anywhere between the late 40s into the 1960s um, typical piece excellent condition it's in gorgeous shape I've appraised Martin guitars um, you know, they're Nazareth, Pennsylvania, of course, made uh, very high quality. There are certain great artists that only play Martin guitars, and this particular guitar would have a secondary market value of about $2,000. It's beautiful. There's an authority certificate of authenticity that it was autographed below by Babe Ruth. So who signed this? No one we know. I love these things. There's these certificate of authenticity, and they're signed by no one of any importance, just by the person who's selling it to you? What are they supposed to say? I'm selling you a fake? I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? So, okay, they have an authenticity kind of thing. It says, to my pal from Babe Ruth. And it's a picture of Babe Ruth holding someone's hand. How'd you acquire it, Regina? Can you speak into the mic? Hold it here, there we go, thanks honey. From your dad? What do you know about it? Did he purchase it? He's pretty, he's pretty young here, Babe Ruth. Your dad had an antique mall, so this was in, the man, just in your dad's antique mall. So Babe Ruth is pretty young in the photo, making the photo from probably the early 1920s, 30s. This particular photograph with his autograph on it, worth about $250.
It's an early career piece. It's relatively easy to tell his autograph. Babe Ruth's autograph is pretty distinctive. It's got this nice strong line where, the, where he crosses the T over into the H. Pretty distinctive, lots of people see it there. The other thing that you want to learn about autographs in general is what type of pen or ink are they using. Certain time periods don't have certain types of ink. You know, like Sharpie magic markers, they're not using those in the 1880s, <laughs> right? That kind of thing. Thanks very much for bringing it in. You're welcome. What made you buy it? Are you Scandinavian? No. You're not? Dutch Polish. Dutch Polish. Okay, so I'm trying to get to Northern Europe, into Scandinavia. This particular piece is a casting, right? And a couple of things that tell me time period. So, it has to date after 1880, right? Because of this element all the way around, which is a particular type of sand casting. And then it has to date a little bit younger, a little bit later, for this applied element, which is also hard casting, sometimes called lost wax casting, okay? This particular piece probably dates to about the 1920s, all around. Now, time period, as I said, 1920s, probably Northern European, value on it about $150. What did you pay? 20 bucks. Okay, did you negotiate? No, I'm still learning. You're still learning? <laughs> Would you negotiate, or do you have like the, like my mother was like Miss Rosary B, Catholic, very, very devout. Okay, so she would say, you're not gonna negotiate on that, Lori, right? That might be where the lightning bolt comes down, right, I don't know. Right, but thinking about that, so was that the reason you didn't negotiate, or just like, hey, you know, it's 20 bucks, I'm not gonna him or haw on 20 bucks? Right. Okay, ladies, him or haw? And why? Because women usually are not like, are more like you. They just don't, they just buy and that's that. Men usually negotiate. How many of the guys negotiate? Every guy has their hand up, right? And though, so you want to negotiate on those things that you really sort of think, well, if I could live without it, I should negotiate. I always say, try to negotiate. Let's talk about this piece. This is a nice piece, rather unusual. So, how'd you acquire this on? Estate sale. What made you buy it? I just liked it. What do you like about it? Honestly. Horses. You're a horse person. Yeah. Equestrian. <laughs> you like the horses. They're kind of chunky, like Bo Botero, <laughs> right? Or Dr. Lorio, <laughs> right? They're kind of chunky, yeah? Kind of big and thick. Why is that? Because they're workhorses, maybe? Because they're workhorses? <laughs> I'm a workhorse, that's for sure. All right, so there's that. Are they hollow? I don't know. Your husband or the guy next to you in the blue shirt is ready to say something, but he's like, I'm not going to butt in. Did she tell you if I'm going to Dr. Lori's show, don't butt in? Is that what happened? I think all of it's hollow. The wheels are also hollow. The carriage is also hollow. Where, if you looked at symbolism, where do you think these are from? I was told they were Hindu temple toys. Hindu temples. Okay, so I've got to get them in India. Can I get them to Turkey? The Bosphorus, the Bosphorus Strait, where Asia and Europe come together, could it be there? That's, they said it came from India. They said they're they were made in India. Yeah. Why would most people say they're made in India? Because most of the brass casting, low level, low quality, is done in India. Your pieces are better than low level Indian brass castings. Your pieces are Turkish. Okay. That's again what the doctor does for you. <laughs> This particular piece is probably made in Istanbul. Major, big, of course, a city of almost 13 million, right? That's what you have here. They have this, which is very typical to the mirab niches, the temple elements um, of, of course, the, the Blue Mosque and um, Hagia Sophia and these famous sites throughout much of Istanbul. Time period, they date to about the 1950s. Value, they're worth about 150. What did you pay? 20. 20? Did you negotiate? Yeah. Okay, from where? How much did they want originally? 50. And you went down to 20. How did you do it? Did you say, will you take 20? Or did you say, I'm giving you five? <laughs> I know you're laughing, but it works. <laughs> I think I probably started at 10. And oh, 20 and you started at 10. 20 Here's my 20, or I'm walking. Yeah. Walk with your wallet. I say it all the time. And people go, oh my gosh, I might lose it. You might lose it. Guess what? Are you going to lose, I don't know, a gallbladder? No. <laughs> but you might not lose that either. Thank you very much. That's nice. And they were taped down like this? Yes. Okay. 
Should they be taped down like this? They were taped down like this in the 1940s onto a piece of cardboard backing. When we open this up, you're going to see the acid burning on the back. That's what this is doing, burning the acid. Okay? They didn't have linen tape then. Linen tape, of course, is the type of tape that you could divorce from it easily. If you take this off, you're going to rip the paper as well. Did you pay more than $20 each? 30 each. That's good. They're worth about 30 each. This one and this one. They are not take they are actually taken out of a book. They were not done for the idea of just printing them originally. What they're done for is for a book of images of Native Americans in their costumes. This is called a transitionary period. What the heck is that, Dr. Lori? It's when you're going from one period to the next period. So this is transitional. This piece dates to between 1915 and 1920. This piece dates 1920 into the Art Deco. Here's why. These curved areas are very Edwardian, the 1915, 1910 to 1915 era. These areas are saying, I want to move toward the angularity, geometric shapes of the Art Deco. So it's a transitionary period in art history. It changes. It's going to make a change. It's the way in which in the Renaissance everything is very realistic, right? Portraits of the Mona Lisa, and then you get to the Baroque and everything's very dramatic. The in-between period is known as the Mannerist period, and it's that change. Figures are very elongated and not specific to either of those movements. This particular piece once had another pole. Did you buy it like this? Did you, do you have other pieces? Is this all you got? So you have a um, glass piece here, you have cast piece here, you had a pole here, and then you have the two candles, the candles basically that light up here into, again, the latter part of the, uh, the early part of the uh, 19 teens into the 1920s value on that piece. It's partially together. You don't have all the pieces. There's only a part of it, about $15. 1926, that's when it dates from, and it's a porridger. It's just a bigger one hang it on the wall, you can put it for decoration. You paid a quarter and value on it, I would say about $60. For a quarter, that's not bad. It's made of brass, it's cast here and then applied, right? So they cast this part and then they basically hammer out the rest. Nice. It's good for a quarter. Hey, it's a quarter, <laughs> right? All right, you're welcome. No markings. I did that with a vase and port in uh, Port Ritchie, Florida, or Fort Myers, Florida, Uncle Louie came out. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah. The woman's like, like, well, what are you bringing me a vase with a person in it for? <laughs> Ashes in it. I was looking at the mark, you know. Do you know what Gurna Percha is? You ever heard of that? No. Gurna Percha is cardboard up against wood that is then covered with a leather kind of material. Gurna Percha is what we have those little cases of early daguerreotype photographs. Okay. Similar type of um, early 20th century, 20s or 30s, as you said, uh, like Gurna Percha. And then the, the, the wood is, of course, oak. See this inside? This, of course, is acting as your humidor. The pipe tobacco goes in here. You put it there. The pipes sit here. Can you see the pipes? Right? The six pipes next to grandpa in his chair and then he wants to have a pipe and he picks a pipe and he puts it in and taps it down and it has a smoke. Got it? Tobacco Anna does not have the same market it always did. You know why? Oh, well now we want to get rid of all the poor people who want to have a cigarette for goodness sakes, right? So, Tobacco Anna doesn't have the same market value. At the Great American Smoke Out every year, you see the tobacco market go up a little bit because everybody's concerned about smoking. Value on this particular piece about $60. Not bad. Marble. Not Carrera marble like Michelangelo's David, but the style is very similar. It's a bust, and usually there are busts of great thinkers, great writers like Dante or Cicero, that kind of thing. This particular piece is a very nice bust. Is it a man or a woman? It's a woman, okay? And if you look at her very closely, you can see this, which represents a halo. Right? And you can see this, which is basically a veil around the forehead, which is very popular in the Renaissance. So she's considered a saint. 
Now it's which saint? Usually saints have attributes with them, right? Saint Lucy has her eyeballs. She took them out when, with her martyrdom. Saint Agatha has her breasts. She cut them off to show, of course, her dedication to Christianity. So was the woman your neighbor a particular, was she Catherine? Was she, did she have a particular name and maybe this was her namesake or her mother's namesake? Okay, so without the attributes, you can't really tell which saint it is because they all kind of look the same. So you have a female saint with a very typical frolic. You know, the saints aren't wearing the V-neck, right? <laughs> the saints are wearing, they're all covered up, the saints. <laughs> very nice piece. Italian made, hand carved, late part of the 19th century, worth about 600 bucks. You pay 250. So very nice job. That's nice. And it's a nice remembrance as well. Other things you want to tell with this, first of all, it probably was in the home of a smoker. Was she a smoker? She wasn't a smoker. It was once in the home of a smoker, maybe prior to her. Or did she have a furnace that would, would be a coal or a wood-burning furnace or a wood-burning stove? These, this is a lot of dirt for these. Cleaning it, very, very difficult to do. You've got to be careful about that. So that's what you're looking at with, the protect, with respect to that. That would have been a white, kind of a creamy white. Sort of like, you know, not really your sweater, kind of like a little bit darker than his white shirt, not Clorox white. Leave it alone as far as cleaning. You should leave it alone as far as cleaning. What you should do about cleaning it is, in fact, what you should do about cleaning it is white cotton glove, white cotton cloth, get rid of the surface dust. That's once a week, whenever you clean the house, no commercial cleaners.